Will this camera blocking license plate frame work during the day? Let's find out. Last week I demonstrated this camera blocking license plate frame at night and a lot of y'all wanted to know if it also works during the day. First, let's find out how this technology works and why it's so interesting. We first need to understand infrared light. This diagram illustrates some of the forms light can take. We're normally aware of visible light, but this is just one tiny sliver of the full light spectrum. Light has an inverse relationship between its energy and wavelength. At the left side of the spectrum, we see gamma rays, which have super high energy and very short wavelengths. At the right side, we see AM radio waves with very low energy and super long wavelengths. Now look to the right of the visible light sliver. This is where infrared light is located. Since it's not in the visible light sliver, that means it's invisible. Common things that emit infrared light are warm things like a fire or your body heat. Normal everyday cameras like the one in your phone don't care about infrared light because we want to take pictures to capture what the human eye sees. However, what if you want to see what's going on during the nighttime and don't want to turn on a bunch of lamp posts? Well, one solution is to flood the environment with infrared light. Humans wouldn't notice it, but we can manufacture cameras to specifically look for the infrared spectrum. This process gives our cameras night vision and has worked very well over the decades. When we look at this security camera, do you notice the ring of red LEDs around the lens? To see the difference at night between regular mode and infrared mode, here is a video of me turning on my camera blocker. This first video is in regular mode and does not have infrared enabled. Notice how the LEDs are not blinding the camera. And in the second shot, infrared mode is enabled. Look how much better you can see with the camera's infrared LEDs illuminating the environment. And when this video was taken, I had three quarters of the LEDs covered for testing purposes. So it's still pretty good. So the reason the camera blocker works is that the camera is very sensitive to infrared light. And the camera blocker sends out a bunch of infrared light, which basically blinds the camera. It's like if someone were to shine a flashlight in your face. You can still see, but you only see a very bright light. Now that we know how the camera works, let's take a look at the camera blocker and start by creating a circuit diagram. We need a battery that will power the circuit. The top side here is the positive voltage and the bottom side is ground or negative voltage. First, the positive voltage runs through the switch indicated by these lines here. Next, it runs through a current limiting resistor indicated by these zigzag lines. The value of the resistor depends on the battery voltage and LED specifications. After the resistor, the voltage runs through the LED causing it to illuminate. Now, I know I drew the switches open, but if you were to close that switch, that's when the current actually runs through the circuit. So here is what the LEDs look like when soldered to the resistors. This example is for the camera blocking sunglasses that I made. And here is what they look like on the license plate frame. Okay, now that we have the theory covered, let's get back to the experiment. We know the camera blocker works at night, so we need to test it during the day. The setup is basically the same. The only difference from last time is that instead of powering the camera blocker from the 12 volt power from the car, I'm using a five volt power bank. I'm also measuring how much power the camera blocker draws with this nifty little meter. One end plugs into the power bank and the other end plugs into the camera blocker. This allows the meter to read both the voltage and amperage flowing through, which when multiplied together gives us power measured in watts. The camera blocker LEDs are rated at 10 milliwatts and there are 12 of them, so we should expect to see a power measurement around 1.2 watts. After engaging the switch, we see that the camera blocker is drawing about 1.078 watts. This is a little under our prediction, but it's close enough as things are not perfect. The meter has a few other menus which may provide some valuable information depending on the situation. All right, now that we got all the nerd stuff figured out, let's get back to the camera blocker and see if it works during the day. Now, if this experiment fails, I might need to make an update with military grade LEDs and try again. Okay, are we ready? Here we go. Three, two, one. Ah, they're not bright enough during the day. Looks like I'm gonna have to buy some expensive LEDs. Stay tuned for the upgrade and comment below with any questions.